Okay, hello and uh, welcome to our series of video casts specifically designed for, for our clients. Um, I'm Adrian Stalley, the Head of Partnerships here at Ultimate Finance, and today I'm joined by, by Andy Collier, Head of Brand Experience at the FD Centre. Um, we want to offer as much value to our clients as we can, and, and one of the ways of doing that is to give you access to advice and an experience from, from industry-leading organisations. The FD Centre are completely independent from Ultimate, but a number of our clients have, have chosen to use their services in recent years, and we've been really impressed in the impact they've made with, with our clients. So today, Andy will talk you through their services, um, how they add value to businesses, and particularly facing the challenges ahead in, in 2021. We're also joined by, by Mel Howarth, one of our highly respected uh, uh, relationship managers here at Ultimate, and Martin and Ben from one of her clients who've uh, recently decided to, to work with the FD Centre, so first-hand experience. And Mel will be talking to them about how that's benefited their business and uh, how that relationship actually works. So Andy, welcome first of all. Um, if I can just hand over to you, can you just tell our listeners a little bit more about the, the FD Centre? Yes, thanks Adrian and hello everybody. Um, it's great to be sharing some time with you really and just to tell you a little bit about us, just to give you some context for the uh, the discussions to follow and the Q&A, which is the important thing. I've been a, an FD and an MD during my career, so I've probably seen both sides of the table and understood I think the pivotal role of finance, particularly in helping an MD, an entrepreneur, a CEO to achieve what they really want to do. And that sort of that real pivot of relationship I've just seen has been immensely important. And, you know, my biggest driver in life, in my purpose, if you like, has always been to elevate the role of finance to really be a, a true business partner. And I've lived that through full time and part time roles, but mainly for the last 20 years in the part time sector. Uh, so my purpose is really important in doing what we do. And it's very similar to a lot of the FDs in the business. That's my why. And we'll see why that's important in a second. So I'll just share my screen with you just to give you just a couple of slides. Uh, this is what we are. Um, it's the part time model for FDs, chief financial officers. And it's really for people that actually don't need a full-time person yet but do need some of the the really particular skill and the brain power uh, to give early access particularly to a growing business and the business going through change um, to get early access before probably a lot of other people could do before you need to pay for a full-time person so you can get in ahead of the competition and things like that just to give you a really good start um, we do a lot of mentoring as well as the standard sort of fd cfo role that's really important to upskill people in your business, to help them progress through life as well. It's not just about hanging on to everything. It's really about growing the business and growing the finance function. So the FD role can sometimes change over time. And, you know, it is all about making a real difference, really. Uh, the FDs that join the portfolio world and join the FD centre really do want to give something back. But importantly, it's not just about doing a role. They want to be working with people and businesses that have variety, but actually working with the people that they have a real connection with. So it's deeper than just doing a job. And everybody can do what they enjoy. And usually what you're doing, what you you enjoy doing, you tend to be good at. Uh, and in the FD world, it also frees up a lot of time for the MD to do a role that they really love. And that's massively important. So how do we go about doing that? This is just how we contextually look at the business. It's really nice when we engage with somebody to try and work out what that business owner, what the business really wants to achieve. If, you've, if you talk about a journey, but you need to have a view over the end. You know, Stephen Covey, I think, said a few years ago, start with the end in mind. If you sort of know where you're trying to get to, then you can build a plan and build it more importantly into manageable steps. Because looking ahead to the future, which might be you know selling the business in a number of years, a family succession, anything like that, it can look a long way away. And also being a, an MD or an owner of a business, it's a little bit lonely when you're trying to talk about those big deep things really. So trying to get to grips with this is really important. But then the granular aspect of that, of course, is to build the detailed plan that will help you get there. So it's really good to understand your own purpose, what you're trying to achieve. I shared mine with you earlier, so it helped me decide what role I, I performed to fulfill on my purpose. What we 
we, we did some surveys quite recently with a lot of business owners and asked them, have you worked out what you're really trying to achieve? And more importantly, have you shared it with the team? Have you got them on board? Have you got the right people with you that share your mindset? The really interesting fact that came out of that was an awful lot of people have sort of worked it out in their head. They understood themselves, but they hadn't yet really communicated to the team and taken the team on board with them, which you might say is a bit of a problem, but actually it's a massive opportunity because the real value to a business is when you can get people aligned to what you're trying to achieve. They're not just there for the money. Obviously, the base needs are important, but it's about something a bit deeper than that. So in every journey, it has to have a starting point. Um, so we work out what really matters. That's really crucial. Um, the concept of an FD really is if you carry on doing what you've always done and don't upskill your finance team to help you grow, you'll probably carry on doing more of the same. Um, the harsh reality of a lot of life is a lot of business startups don't carry on doing more of the same, actually without changing something on the path to achieving the ultimate aim, actually they slip away a little bit because they don't really change and adapt to new circumstances. So the green dot is often the first time we meet somebody. Uh, it's really important to get the operational basis of finance sorted, to get a really firm base. I'll give you some more detail what that means on my final slide. But then the firm base of operational finance really frees up the business, the entrepreneur and the FD to focus a bit more on the strategic aims and getting that plan sort of granular and these meaningful steps. Ultimately, what we're really saying is that the business and the owners won't achieve what they really want out of life and how the business supports that without getting to that strategic level. If you're just stuck in a, the operational layer, doing great things at the, you know, the management accounts, the cash flow and things like that, all those essentials, it'll be good, but it won't necessarily be great. Let's give you a bit more granular detail about what that really means. So we, we've often used this 12 box framework here and just to build it up from the bottom, um, it's really important to have a firm business support layer. The compliance things have to be right. Not only does that cause a lot of MDs headaches uh, looking at compliance, <clears throat> if you get it wrong, it's also a big financial penalty these days and getting worse by the minute. Tax planning and legal issues obviously important, suck up a lot of time, often quite a lot of money without some structure or somebody to help you do that. Outsourcing is becoming more common in finance um, as data and science and big computing sort of scales up. There'll be increasing demands for that to be outsourced as a service. The banking stroke funding relationship is really important. And that's how we, you know, people like Ultimate that we know really well, it's really important to understand the mindset of the funder. And, and so everybody gets to achieve what they want to achieve and talk the same language. And if you need more money to fulfill future growth, you know, a great solid relationship and a history of credibility, usually with a good FD can be a great starting point to get there. So the base has to work. Uh, the MD wants to sleep at night. But sleeping at night isn't enough to achieve the ultimate aim, but it is important. It also frees up a lot of energy to focus on the big things. The operational side of finance is gets into what most people would regard as the key role of finance. We think it's a bit deeper than that. You know, so the systems, the, the reporting, profit improvement. Yes, it, you know, FDs do improve profits. It's not just about cutting costs, although cost control can be crucial. Cash flow, of course the lifeblood of a business. Uh, it is king, it always will be king. And if, if nothing else, the COVID period has shown how important it is to have a really firm grip on your cash flow and some contingency element. Reporting is really interesting. It's not just about doing a profit and loss account. You know, look, look at customer segment, profit, profitability. Where are you really making the money? What should we be selling more of? Perhaps what should we be selling less of? Or putting the price up to reflect that. Really sort of much more detail to help drive a business forward. All this firm base frees up time, money and energy to focus on the other crucial element, which is the strategic layer. You know, the, what are the real strategic activities? What are the key risks? You know, there's been two massive risks in the UK quite recently in Brexit and COVID. Um, you shouldn't let your life be ruled by risk, but you should have an assessment of the key ones. And maybe have some contingency plans, a bit of a war chest perhaps put away somewhere that can just help you ride that particular storm. 
what's the timetable to what you're trying to achieve? And again, this, this concept of manageable steps is really important. You need to feel in control that you're not biting off too much, but you are achieving sort of forward momentum. And then ultimately, you, sometimes you need to move into a different layer of funding. If you want to do an acquisition, um, you need to look at maybe a different source of funding to do that. Not always, but if the, if the price goes up and the stakes go up, sometimes it's a different discussion around private equity, venture capital, things like that. So in essence, Adrian, that is the key of how we go about things and the context for this discussion. Um, in the slide pack, there will be my contact details. We, we just love talking to people. Um, we don't help everybody we talk to. Sometimes it's a different thing they need, but we just like engaging with people and trying to find those, those great customers and clients that actually RFDs really want to work with with a passion and help them achieve their life's objectives, really. So that's, uh, that's me, Adrian. I'll that's pass great. back to you if that's okay. Fabulous. So thanks, Andy, for taking us through the, the, the value of using the FD Centre or just the difference a great FD makes uh, in many cases. As I said earlier, a number of our clients have independently chosen to, to use the FD Centre, which is really good because we know they're in, in really safe hands in, in that respect. So Mel is one of our uh, relationship managers and she looks after to Martin and Ben. So Mel, over to you just to, to talk through their experience of, of this particular relationship. Thank you, Adrian. Hi, Martin and Ben. Thank you for joining us today. Hiya. Hi there. Um, just to set the scene then, Martin, um, can you tell everyone about a little about your business? OK, well, our business was formed in 2014 um, uh, as a ceilings and petition contractor working in the construction industry uh, covering the south of England. Um, and over the last six years, we have grown into a more of a construction company um, offering uh, uh, multiple discipline service across the construction industry sector. Um, obviously, uh, with that becomes difficult payment terms, working in a difficult market, price increases, um, and a number of other challenges. Um, the company's grown. It started with two employees. It's now employs 25 people in an office and with a turnover of uh, 7.6 million last year, and we're forecasting a turnover around 10 million this year um, and we probably couldn't have done that without an FD in place. Um, this was recommended to us by Ultimate Finance um, and they put us in touch with the FD group um, and from there on it's been quite a success working with them. Um, we, yeah, so we've um, we've seen that how your business has sort of improved over even just the last twelve months. But have you always had an FD, um, or was this um, something? Was this role kind of picked up by um, one of you guys then um, previously? Yeah, I mean, really, it, it was mainly picked up by myself. But um, to be quite honest, what what Julian, who's our FD from the FD Centre, um, we. I, I wasn't probably doing a lot of things that I should have been doing um, as I was commercial manager to start with when I joined uh, the company four years ago um, but that role developed into commercial director um, so ultimately I, I would have been picking up that role um, but probably not fulfilling it to its full potential um, and not doing the, the full role itself so yeah. So um, you mentioned that we kind of recommended the FD Centre to you. What was the, the main trigger for bringing in the expertise other than our recommendation? Um, we were, as, as Martin rightly said, the, the, the business has grown quite quite heavily in the last few years. Um, I mean, last year we turned over 7.6 million, but the two years before that were between four and four and a half million in both years. So as you can see, over the last sort of 24 months, it's, it's, it's gone up quite significantly. Um, what that meant was we needed a larger facility with, with yourselves, with Ultimate Finance, um, and really to have the right processes in place to, to, to manage that and to even understand that we needed a bigger facility. We needed more professional people and we needed an FD like Julian um, to, to show us why we needed it and 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 to also put various parameters in place so we, we can manage it properly as well so i think it's mainly down to growth really um yeah. and the need for for a larger facility with yourselves yeah 
And um, prior to speaking to the FD Centre, did you know what the support would look like? Um, not really. I mean, I've I've had the benefit of working under a financial director at, at, at previous companies, larger companies. Um, some companies I work closely with them, some some I've never even met them, but the, the businesses are so big. However, um, my knowledge of what they did on a day-to-day -day basis, no, I had no idea. Um, but in fairness, we, I mean, we met with yourselves and, and the FD centre um, and they, they sort of explained what sort of roles they could occupy. Um, they, they said what services they could provide. Um, they also made sure that we're aware that it could be tailored to suit our needs, the, the business and, and also our affordability as well. You know, what, what you know, our, our cost plan and our business growth needs to be able to take on that person at, at a certain rate. So um, no is, is the honest answer, to be honest. Um, but we knew what we were employing and what we were going to get before, you know, Julian started on day one. Um, yeah, I remember you being quite positive about um, about the initial meeting you <coughs> had with them um, with Julian at the time as well. So that's really good. Um, yeah. And then, what's the arrangement now? What does it look like in terms of what um, what Julian does? So, so, so Julian, um, Julian actually gives us between two and four days a month um, of office time, but he's always available on the phone at all hours of the day. You know, <coughs> sometimes I speak to Julian at eight o'clock at night. So he's uh, he, he's very helpful. Um, he puts himself up out for us, and he's he's got he's got our business interest certainly. Um, he also tables our monthly senior management meeting, so he doesn't actually just bring the financial side to our business. He also brings another level of management. You know, he's been involved in some some huge businesses over the years uh, as an FD. And he, his processes and protocols, he's bringing them big businesses, processes and protocols into our small business. Um, and and yeah, he's great. He's great. Yeah, definitely recommend using the FD Centre or someone of Julian's calibre to, to push the business to the next level. Brilliant. What's, what do you think is the most valuable thing um, that having um, a senior FD in the business has brought? Um, I think, it, like Martin just said, it's obviously, from my point of view, being on, on the commercial side of the business or the financial side of the business, um, our understanding of the importance of a monthly management accounts and, and, and actually understanding the what you know what's tabled in in the monthly management accounts and our year-end accounts and how that can affect our overall image of the business. Um, I think also a level of structure. I mean, as Martin said, he didn't just. It's not just the financial side. It's it's the the structure of the business and how how it's run. You know, he mentioned the senior management team meetings that we have monthly, um, where we work so closely together in in the office. Obviously, prior to COVID, um, we seem to skip over a lot of meetings like that. We ne we never used to have a, a a senior management team meeting because we used to work close, so closely together. Everyone would just chat to each other, you know, over desks. So it, it seems like well, we all know what's going on. But actually, he's, he's brought in a, a simple, minuted structure where we actually sit down and, and, and everyone's got actions which, which all point towards the business growth and, and, and everyone doing the jobs that they're supposed to be doing. Um, so, yeah, mainly structure and a bit more process and an understanding of, of financial matters. I yeah. That's the main thing. And has, just, um, has, sorry to interrupt, <laughs> has his, um, has having a, a um, Julian um, within the business impacted where you spend your time other than the meetings? Yeah, I mean, I'll answer that again if you like. Um, I mean, it's, I think where we are a small business, yes, I'm the commercial director. Martin is obviously the executive director and owner of the business. But we all could, due to the size of the business, we've, we've grown by pitching in at various levels as well. Like Martin's, Martin's in, you know, heads the um, pre-construction team and the business development team, as well as our facilities arm that we, that we run as well. Um, and myself, I look after the quantity surveyors in, in the business. I help with the facilities arm as well. Um, 
and obviously then you got the finance as well. So I was kind of heading that up as well. So um, and Colin is another director who um, deals with HR, health and safety, but also runs small projects as well, on, on as well as that, just to obviously pitch in. Now, there's a lot of roles there um, that actually Julian coming in and almost sitting above us, yeah. all three of us, and he kind of takes away the pressure so we can actually spend more time on those roles um, and actually perfecting the roles that we're, we're we're supposed to be doing a bit a bit more. Even as directors, what he does, he pinpoints things and we have to make ourselves accountable. You know, yeah. he comes into a meeting and sits above us and chairs the meeting mm -hmm. on a monthly basis, not just based on finances, mm -hmm. on based on how we run our business. And Julian will make us all be accountable. We'll we'll all we all go away from that meeting with tasks or jobs to do, um, and and I think he's bringing good structure to the business as well. So, it's it's worth noting that we asked him to sit above us in that way because it because it, you know he hasn't come in and said I'm I'm gonna you know he's he, he's tailored to our very good it's to, tailored to our needs and and we you know we've asked him to sit there because it keeps us all in in check. Yeah, <laughs> fantastic. Good idea. <laughs> right. um, and what do your finance team think about having Julian on board? Um, well, as I say, I mean, it's myself and Victoria at the moment. We've got an accounts manager who um, who basically deals with our day to day accounts running and, and myself. We're 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 happy with it. It's, it's, it's I know Victoria feels that she's got someone to bounce off because she she really bridges that gap between the business and the our accountants our external accountants because we, we don't they have... found their workload be, being up as well because obviously that's one thing julian yes. has done is dealing with accountants is obviously his expertise yeah and and he's making them be accountable as well you know yeah they've got deadlines to meet they actually sit <laughs> in the smt meeting sometimes as well which would yeah. have never happened before but no and and that's the thing. He's he's raised the expectations of um, of what what we expect from them. You know, there there was things that they should have been doing that we actually didn't realise that actually yeah we need to know that because of X Y Z. Um, but as a, to answer your question, the finance team are, are happy because it's another it's another layer of support really, another 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 level of support for for us all really. Yeah, that sounds like a massive value add. So in them. Yeah. 2020 that's a pretty challenging year for everybody um so what were the benefits of having um julian um, on board during this time during the the pandemic well other than obviously making sure we were sort of as financially re ready as we could be um one of one of the main things for us was um understanding and running through the process the furlough process firstly understanding what what it meant for the business um how you know how how we go about it making sure that we making sure we sent the to the correct letters to the employees and explained you know we had, we had a we had a consul consultancy process with the um with every employee and so and explained to them um and to be honest myself and collins called everyone and explained what it meant for them um, I think Julian obtained a letter from, you know, he 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 obtained a draft letter for us to send out to the employees and and and, and almost scripted what we needed to run through with them. Um, that for that straight off the bat was 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 fantastic. Um, I think we would have missed out on on the benefit of the furlough payments um, for for the first couple at least if it wasn't for him. Um, we probably would have, you know, just 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 going through the the process of letting them know and telling them what their responsibilities are whilst they're on furlough. We probably would have messed that up as well, if I'm honest. But um, but yeah, so that that firstly was was the biggest thing that he did for us. Um, I think also financially, it goes without saying, ca cash flow um, forecasting. Um, I mean, we were doing it already, and we haven't really changed our cash flow much to be honest um because we've already had adapted a cash flow system to suit the ultimate fi finance model um which works so um that was quite encouraging um to know that that, that he was impressed with that 
Um, but yeah, just just generally not tightening the strings, but just making sure they were kept tight. You know, there's no and and forecasting where your work was coming from. Um, how is this really going to impact your business? You know, he's asking, making us ask ourselves the questions of what. Okay, this is happening in the world. What's going to happen to your supply chain? What's going to happen to your 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 clients? Is your client base going to shrink? But we were lucky that we had um, a lot of NHS clients, which which needed us to to to, to continue working. Really, so so yeah. yeah. Um, so have your long-term plans changed since bringing Julian in? Well, we've actually got a long-term plan now. Julian's in. <laughs> we didn't have one before. So uh, we've got <laughs> targets, goals set by Julian. Um, not just by Julian. As a team, we've, we've discussed the, the, the targets, where we want to be uh, the ne next year, in two years, three years, four years, and five years. So... Um, there's a bit of work to do before we we reach them targets but julian has definitely had an impact because like i said before he come in there wasn't no target there was targets in our head we talked about targets between us but there was nothing formally down what we were working towards and i think andy mentioned that within his within, within his speech saying that um it's easy to talk about things but actually putting them on a bit of paper and action on them is another matter and that's what julian done so I think it's helped us understand. We knew where we wanted to get to, but it was a case of more, 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 more. But he's let he's 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 enabled us to understand that actually more isn't always what you need. You can't just increase your turnover like that without having a business model that can accommodate it. Because if you you know if you, you know, payment terms payment in. terms and you know ultimate ultimate finance helps us do that as well. In fairness, because we. We know what our average payment terms that coming in are, you know, and, and straight away Julian identified that your, you know, we're, payment terms are running at say 60 days. We're paying out everyone on pretty much 45 days. So if you increase that turnover, all you're doing is making a big, a, a small problem bigger. You know, it's just just increasing the issue. So it's un, he, he's enabled us to achieve the growth. That's for sure. Yeah, and and, and with assets, we we we're, yeah. looking to, we're looking to purchase our own uh, building at the moment. Again, he had huge input into that. He's having the, he's having huge input into that at the moment. With looking at our expense at the moment against what we're going to pay out and putting the the the, the model of finance together of how we're going to do it. So yeah. between him and Ben, um, and he's also, and I think you mentioned it again, Andy. He's teaching Ben. Yes, he's been a mentor to Ben because hopefully. In five years' time, Julian will probably be retired in the Bahamas or somewhere, and Ben will be doing Julian's job. Yeah. So it's sort of a mentoring process. What? Why he's actually helping the business? He's actually teaching you as well. So you're paying yeah, for him to mentor, and you're paying for him to get the business stable. So yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Well, that's great. Thank you. It sounds like you've learned a lot from them, and um, thank you for answering my questions. And I'll hand back over to you, Adrian. Brilliant. So thanks, uh, and thanks, guys. I say, um, brilliant. Loads of great stuff there, and, and thank you, Mel, for just conducting that. Um, Andy, if I can just bring you in here as well, and also with the guys, and um, they touched there. I've just made a couple of questions, if I may, to pick up on all of that. They touched there on the importance of that monthly senior management meeting. Andy, would you say that's possibly the most critical, the biggest? improvement of touch points that you can make during a month there's a lot of other benefits but that just bring it together and they use the word making it accountable yeah it's a really important thing you know when when the business is really young you're in there doing all the stuff and you, you're fighting fires and you're delivering and things like that it's really difficult to keep track of any routine or any discipline around it and what what we i think we know over years is sort of adding you know sort of systems and discipline to a business uh, alongside a really defined plan is the magic ingredient really so the the monthly meetings it doesn't have to be overly corporate you know a lot of people we work with they're not they're not trying to create a big corporate exercise that it's a monthly meeting is much more important than the title board meeting if you know what i mean it's just to keep people together discussing what's important everybody knowing what everybody else is doing and and how that all that fits together and a little bit of accountability yeah that's really important you can have the greatest plan in the world, but if nobody ever delivers and sort of comes back and said, yes, I've done that, I'm on track, what's really changed? 
So, yeah, I think those meetings are absolutely crucial, particularly as a business grows through time. And it will get a bit more formal as you get bigger and you get, you know, full time functional heads for a lot of things when you're really on the growth path, if that's what you want. But it's a meeting around your own style. But the key elements are having having a plan, the understanding and, yes, a little bit of element of accountability as a team, really. Really appreciate that. Um, Ben, Martin, I've got to ask you, you, you talked about your business growth. How hard was it? You turn the clock back of inviting this stranger into your business to talk about such important things, because that's must be quite daunting for, for business owners and directors. Yeah. Um, to be quite honest, it was it was da- it was daunting to, to to start with, but the minute we met Julian, they you know they 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 the FD Centre always arranged uh, a meeting with the person, they and and they. They put an emphasis on that it has to be a fit for you, as well. You know, you have to you have to be happy. We're not just going to send someone in and say, right, that's what you've got. It's got to be, you know, there's got to be interaction. There's got to, you've got to gel with the person you bring in, and and, and we did straight away. He's he's ringing me now. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's I, I, put, I put something else to that as well about the FD centre. They didn't just send Julian in. We had an assessment yes. by, by one of the directors yes. at the FD Centre, first of all. And we're a very boisterous office. We're a construction industry. We're very young, which means there's lots of swearing goes on <laughs> and all the stuff that you, you don't really see in an everyday corporate office. So they, they, they give us a candidate that would suit our company. Julian come in, ex-military. Um, <laughs> he can't come equipped. He was he, he was very stern. He still is now. He, he's very forward, but he also he, he sort of ties in with what we're trying to do because there, there's certain I'm I'm sure there's certain FDs. Not all FDs will probably work, but they actually pick the FD for you, and you interview them. Obviously, the FD, and we chose Julian. As soon as we met him, we said, "Yep, yeah, that, that's 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 us." Okay. So, so just picking up on that point, Andy, um, in terms of that matchmaking, if I use that expression, has got to be very careful. And people are going to ask, in terms of the, the cost of, and return on investment for businesses, um, not everyone can afford an FD, the concept of a consultant coming in. How do you, I don't, I'm not talking about the price tariff, but how do you go about pricing it so it's right for a business that they can afford it, but they're also going to get return on that? Yeah, <laughs> it, you know, I think you can go through life worrying about cost or you can think about value, really, because the, the best way to look at a cost is always in the context of value. So how we go about that, Adrian, is in the early phase to really work with the guys, understand what they're trying to achieve, what, what the potential is for things to improve, you know, what can, what impact can we make in these specific areas? And obviously then, you know, you can put the cost against that and actually say, does this work? Because really we wouldn't want to work with anybody where we couldn't cover that that cost a number of times to deliver that value. And, you know, it's not all instantaneous. There is a, it's like a small element of investment in that process, but we tend to look at things on short, medium and long term. So what, what are the quick wins? What are the, the things we can do quickly that give, give the, the client confidence in us and also contribute to the business, whether that's sorting a report out or a cash flow or actually profit improvement? So I think that's the way to look at it, Adrian, really. We, we would only ever really work with anybody where we are confident, A, we've got the right fit, and B, we can deliver value well in excess of what that costs. Otherwise, why would you do that, really? Because it just leads to disappointment for people. Absolutely. No, I appreciate it. Fabulous. And just one final question from me for, for both of you. So if I aim there, first of all, uh, Ben and Marty, in terms of we've all been through a lot last year and this year, from a financial planning perspective, your business owners, what piece of business advice would you give other business owners going into 2021 from a, a financial planning point of view? Okay. Make sure they've actually got a plan in place, first of all. And, yeah. and someone that, that has experience in with financial planning involved in that plan because there's lots of little hidden things out there. And and, and as you say, cash flow is key. If you run out of cash, you've got nowhere to turn, really. Brilliant. Um, so my, my, my thing would be to get an FD on board, even if, if it's for a day or two a month, um, and, and look at planning because I'm, I'm sure – a day or two a month can change your business completely, the way you look at it, definitely. 
Travis, and I'm picking it up from a... a yeah, there's, there's not a tremendous amount to add. I mean, having a plan, going into some detail, a plan that achieves the objectives of the people that own the business and run the business, that's really important. Does that deliver what you want? Because the business quite often what it produces actually is an enabler to do deliver some other things as well, like the long-term plan, things like that. So make money, have fun while you're doing it, but it's, it's meeting all those objectives. I think that is the biggest thing, really. And I think the only thing I'd add to it is because COVID was so dramatic for some people, it, it is a chance, I think, just to have a, a good solid look at the business and think, is it, are we in the right place? Have we got all the right team? Do we need to change something a little bit? Because there is a little bit of an element of you get a, a small window to maybe do things a little bit differently in the new world. An example would be, you know, we've, we've embraced video technology. So we love being out at clients' premises, talking to people, being in the office. That's crucial. But, you know... The guys mentioned that these touch points really and the contact whenever you need it. So it's not just the phone now. We can we can dial in for 10 minutes on the screen and just have a bit yeah. of a catch up without having to get in the car and drive to the office and waste a lot of time for everybody really. That that will immensely add to how we do business. So lots of other people out there can look at like the, the sort of new world a little bit and think how can we adapt and sort of evolve into a different place. Really, uh, really good advice. I uh, appreciate that. So on that note, so say thank you, Andy, Ben, Martin, and of course, yeah, uh, Mel for, for sharing all your experiences and obviously Mel being part of our fantastic relationship management team. So um, appreciate yeah. you coming on. And I hope this uh, this video class has been really informative from all those experiences about the, the, the value of a, an FD role or outsourcing that to, to people like the FD Centre. Again, our experiences are only very positive, but to bring that expertise in right now is probably more important than, than ever. So as part of our passion to, to add value to um, uh, our clients uh, in their life cycle with us, huge thank you for listening and um, hopefully you can join us again next time. So thank you all for your time.